more. Hi, Emma. Hi, and hello to the banana that you just got, like, sitting in the middle of the desk yes. there. I, that's that's a new addition, yes? <laughs> well, it mm. kind of, so we play games every uh, few weeks for points, and whoever has the most points at the end wins LA's Top Banana Award. So we pass wow. it around from place to place, but now uh, it's just hanging out there. For I do have to say I was reigning see. champion, but mm -hmm. because of the delay with Skype, um, when Andy is gone, it's really just not fair, allegedly. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> nice. we put the points yeah. on hold, okay. now yeah. we play for fun, and the banana is in a neutral zone until yes. Andy returns. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you thank you for uh, coming. Oh. Sorry about hey, that. Do you want to see our intro? <laughs> <laughs> we got a really sweet intro for our show. Robert's mad he's never won. We could, uh, yeah. we could start from the top. I didn't, I didn't like that. No, 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 keep it going. This is live TV. Um, this is great. Emma, we're also combating the delay between Robert's left ear and his right ear. So you have to understand yeah. there's a little bit of uh, that going on. All right, well, let's talk about this. This is crazy. This GameStop story is trending. Uh, they had a year of being front and center, of course. They were a meme stock that went crazy. Uh, the company was struggling to keep their brick and mortar stores afloat. Then they were the target of a Reddit scheme, uh, which skyrocketed stocks and theirs was included. Now the company is back in the news because the CEO, George Sherman, is stepping down this summer with what you could call, uh, what, like a, a 64-bit parachute, perhaps? Can we coin that term? Yeah. A 64-bit parachute that's been built out of a, a small fortune in stock value that he's getting paid out and walking away with. Uh, yeah, this whole story is wild because basically GameStop was really, really struggling even pre-pandemic because they are a brick and mortar store and by and large sales are digital. Even, even if people are purchasing physical copies of games, they tend to order them online from places like Amazon. So then this whole GameStop Reddit stock explosion happens and GameStop suddenly back on top. And now you have the CEO who was not doing a good job as CEO. Like he was very, very unable to adapt to the changing marketplace, basically being rewarded for his ineptitude. Like they're in a place where they're basically able to just give him a bunch of money to leave and not work for so them anymore because he's screwing things up. And, and I'm, as far as I can understand this, and I'm not like a you know a financial expert by any means, please don't ask me about how I spend my money, it's bad. Uh, <laughs> but the guy basically had stock options or he had some kind of incentive where if the stock price was a certain percent or a certain number rather, he would get a bonus. And somehow because yeah. we memed this stock up, we inflated the value, we the, the Redditors inflated the value of the stock as a meme. Uh, that hit that threshold, it triggered it. That was probably part of his contract, and he's walking away with like $179 million, um, wow. yeah, that's which is amazing. Exactly right. And kind of contrary to the original conceit, which was we're going to try to stick it to Wall Street and the rich people. I think that was there was this sort of populist notion yeah. that doing that was going to somehow result in a bunch of the little guys getting money when in reality here, you know, this guy who maybe was actually doing more harm to their brand ends up walking away with uh you know nearly a quarter of a million a billion dollars in cash yeah crazy. i mean it is it, it, it's a crazy situation because like we can't discount the fact that there were a lot of sort of regular people who did benefit from the increase in gamestop stock and who were able to do things like pay off their college tuition or you know one guy actually like used his additional earnings to give Nintendo Switch lights to children in need. Yeah. So you see a lot of good that came from this, but as you say, on the opposite end of the spectrum, it seemed mm. like at first, oh, every this is this is making capitalism right and now mm. it's just like everything that's wrong with capitalism yeah. all in all in one story. Look, I'm still just looking for who to blame for giving me 395 for a slightly used PlayStation mm. 4 game in trading mm. credits. Uh, mm. That's that's my mm. problem. Yeah. His um, name is Trevor. Yeah. His name is Trevor, and now he is a billionaire. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, Emma, few things, as we know, are, are more important than family. So when the electronic yes. Lego Mario released without Mario's brother, Green Luigi, it didn't feel right. I can feel your no. passion. I, yeah. I'm, always, I'm always, you know, carrying the banner for the sidekicks. Good. But soon you're, there will be a Luigi reunion. Stan. Yeah. 
Uh, but uh, Mario and Luigi are being reunited. How, how is this going to work? Yeah, so basically now there is actually going to be a Luigi set that will be available very soon. So again, he was not included in the original line of Nintendo Lego releases, but now he's here uh, or, or on his way to being here, basically. Now these sets are super cool because they use things like uh, there's like electronic components to them so that they like light up or can like change the little visuals that are on their chests or what have you. Um, and you know... Welcome Luigi to the party is really what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I was watching the uh, the video that uh, we're showing here now um, uh, with the audio and stuff, and it's it's crazy. I was not expecting this is not your grandpappy's Lego set. They're like mm -hmm. you said, they're making noises and having little electronic displays in them, and you could put them in certain spots and they do crazy things. This is actually kind yeah. of cool. yeah, yeah. Okay, and, and these are super Mr. cool. Ho okay, go ahead. I was going to say, Mr. Hype Man Robert over here, though, you know, do you cop this or do you wait? Is this something that you buy and hold on to? And are we going to, are these going to be flying off the shelves and flip? I, I, I could see, I potentially see it. Uh, personally, I could see it on StockX. I don't know. But uh, personally, <laughs> I wouldn't uh, buy it probably because uh, I, I like my feet and I don't like stepping on Legos on the floor. So, <laughs> you know, that's the only thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. But I, I Sorry, think as an adult, unless you have, you know, children perhaps, but like as an adult, who lives by themselves, unless you've got like cats that love knocking things on the ground, which mine do, um, <laughs> your, your feet tend to be pretty safe from like <laughs> you know? Well, you so. can see more about Robert's feet at onlyfeet.com slash Robert Fonte. <laughs> it's very That's expensive right though, it's very expensive. <laughs> yeah, right. A prize possession, Robert's feet, oh goodness. <laughs> the new highly anticipated Lord of the Rings series is, oh my gosh, $465 million for one season. So in contrast, Game of Thrones, HBO's fantasy phenomenon, I don't know why we have to clarify that, you know what Game of Thrones is, that cost about $100 million. So we are quadrupling the cost. Will this Emma fill the void that Game of Thrones left behind? I am still sad. We talked last week about the Iron Anniversary and how they recut and re-released season A eight. A trailer for the so last season. So frustrating. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it only reminded me that I, on Sunday night, I was like, I used to get so excited to sit on my couch at 6 p.m. and watch Game of Thrones. Will yeah. this replace that? Well, it'll be really interesting to see because Amazon, by and large, for their Prime series, releases them all in one batch. Now, mm. there have been instances wherein Amazon has done a bunch of pilots and released them all together, and then the ones that people like after they've built up some hype, they actually go to series. Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, the first thing coming to mind for me. But typically, again, they release these as a bingeable situation. And one of the things that was so incredible about Game of Thrones was that it really reintroduced this idea of event television, mm -hmm. which we're mostly seeing in the form of Disney Plus shows mm -hmm. now, things like WandaVision, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, The Mandalorian, all of mm -hmm. which release on a week-to-week -week basis. So do I think that this is going to be watched by a lot of people and be very successful? Yes, but I think it would behoove Amazon to go to a weekly model because that is the way that you manage to keep your property in the spotlight for an extended period of time. Maybe they and do. obviously, yeah, I mean, and obviously they're, they're gunning for Game of Thrones with, with right. this Lord of the Rings series. Like there's, there's no questions about that. I would say maybe they do kind of what they did with the boys where they release three and then oh, make yeah. you wait week by week by week. So they give you a yeah. little binge but then you got to wait it out. So I right. agree with you. That would yeah. be smart to yeah. get people talking well, every week. To your point, too, Disney Plus also did that with WandaVision. Wanda, they did yeah. One, episode one and two, and then week to week. Um, so, yeah, maybe this is a good opportunity for Amazon to kind of switch to that format. And I well, be and, and I'm, I'm thinking here, sitting here also thinking that those things that they have, right, which are IP for the Marvel Universe mm -hmm. and also a ton of money, Amazon also has in Lord of the Rings and all yep. of the, you know, half a trillion wait half a half a billion dollars they're going to spend on yeah. this series so it's crazy i'm just hoping that uh you know i'm, I'm just holding on to see who's going to get to play bilbo baggins uh, <laughs> I'm it, I, I don't Wood, think bilbo's personally. gonna yeah i I'd don't think to bilbo's gonna be in it but you know spoiler alert. i feel like we're <laughs> uh, spoilers spoilers there's a lot more lord of the rings 
than what is in the Peter Jackson films. Yeah, they have yeah. A and then huge there's a well. lot of yeah. stuff in those Hobbit movies that's not in the Hobbit. <laughs> I, they just wanted to make a trilogy out of a relatively short book that's mostly for children. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But Fife, that's okay. Where can we go that's to okay. see you week to week to week and to binge all the things you've done before? To binge all the things I've done before, I would recommend heading on over to the Ven Download YouTube channel where we've got all kinds of great content. You can also check out all of our content on Venn.tv anytime find it on your roku tv on samsung tv it's all over the place uh and there shall i be uh, speaking of binging uh, we know today is thirsty thursday for you what are we drinking oh okay so our latest thirsty thursday cocktail is uh sort of a variation on a white russian Ooh. um which is called uh a snowbird, uh, which is the ship name that my Twitch community came up with for uh, Bucky and Falcon, because you know it's like Winter Soldier and Falcon's oh, a bird. Oh, that's great! So Love snowbird. That. Awesome. Sounds What's in great. it? <laughs> oh, it's uh, you know it's like vodka and Bailey's and and cream and you like basically put whipped cream on the top of it and shave it off and then do like a sprinkling of um, red velvet cookies as oh a See, I, It had to vary from the white Russian just a little bit. Love that. Now we're inspired. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's yeah, so it is a variation, definitely a dessert drink, uh, but totally worth the calories. Mm. Yes, make it feel like it's Christmas in April. I am on board. <laughs> that sounds delicious. Emma, we'll see you next week on uh, what's going on with Ven in pop culture and video games. We'll be right back on Five Live. <laughs>